Hello everyone, this is my first podcast, I'd like to do a series as I meet more people. I'm here with Jamie, which I met at the Ubud Market Hostel in the center of Ubud, which is Bali, Indonesia. Jimmy has been living in Mexico and he's traveled around 72 years old, very impressive, and we've had a conversation about life, religion, universe, and more, and uh, sorry, I do apologize about the sound in the background, we are in the hostel, but in any case, enjoy and give me any feedback in comments or personal message, whatever you prefer, thank you. Okay, the world and the way it works. This is what I choose to believe. I don't know it. I can't prove it. I don't need to prove it. It's what I believe. I believe that the super wealthy of the earth, the big money people, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Soros, it's not important, the names, they exist. I believe that they select the governments of the earth that they support all parties, all candidates. It doesn't It's not important to them who wins because whoever wins will be in their debt. They will have to serve them. And how do they serve them? By ensuring that they continue as a class, all of them, the wealthy, the powerful. They are above the law. They make laws, they control laws, but they don't have to obey it in general. And that's their big benefit. They can do what they want. Privilege and power. And it's simple for me. They select the governments in order to perpetuate the system which ensures the survival of their class, the preservation of their privilege and power. That's all they're interested in. What more is there for them? They have all the toys and money and power and homes. and They have all that. But they have to preserve the system in order to preserve their quality of life, their power, and their above the law, and their... Okay. It's simple for me. That's the way it works. The governments of the Earth, especially the United States, Great Britain, and others, the governments of the Earth initiate war. War. While they speak of It's to ensure safety and security and liberty for those whom we are attacking. But for me, they are after resources, oil, and power over others in the region. They speak of honor, truth, security, liberty, and justice for all. And these, for me, are lies. They are not ideals that they are trying to achieve and somehow failing always, but the equality under the law for all men, they speak of. If you are white, have money, and are male, you will be equal. If you are brown-skinned, poor, or a woman, you are fucked. You have no chance at equality or justice. It's not designed for you and me. It's designed for them. The system is in place to control everyone else while they go on about their business. I see very little evidence to the contrary. They speak of honor, equality, justice, truth, brotherhood of man, but they do nothing to ensure it. They don't say to people, Be at peace with each other, share with each other. They might once a year give a nice speech, but their actions every day are contrary to what they preach, their ideals. And it's just, for me, hypocrisy on a grand scale, the lies. And I try to not be angry with them. I do not judge them because they are fulfilling their agenda and I have mine. I work in my self-interest, they work in theirs. Theirs seems to be the preservation, acquisition of power and privilege. Mine is to seek peace and to share peace with others. Their, their agenda is theirs, mine is mine.
I can't say this is bad. It's not good for me and I'm not for most of the people and I don't approve of it. I would judge it to be wrong if I gave it that much thought, but I must accept they are human and they are acting in their own self-interest, egocentrically, selfishly, greedily. Okay. I have been egocentric, selfish, and greedy. I've been arrogant, petty, cruel, small-minded, and hurtful. I've been all those things. I just don't want to do it anymore. I see that they have no interest in growing spiritually and helping others grow spiritually. Power, things, money, and above the law, that's what they're interested in. They see no other way. They exist in that world, and that's their world. What changed you? And was there a pivotal moment or something that you went from this to more peaceful? And I've always been interested, number one, in the truth. As I knew my truth, I saw that most people did not speak the truth. They just didn't care about it. And I said, well, you're not most people. You know the truth is important. From the time I was young, from the time I was 21 or two, I said, the truth. I also saw that the government was not a benign entity, that they lied and stole and oppressed and deceived and repressed and spoke of all these other things. And I said, bullshit, it's just not for me. I don't believe them, I don't trust them, and I don't like them. I don't like what they do. I started to achieve peace and clarity not that long ago. Most of my life I drank and drugged heavily. The only way that I knew to deal with life. I had been raised with no love, affection, approval, guidance, positive input of any kind, and I grew frustrated. I was angry a lot of the time. I saw others who seemed happy and gentle. Why not me? Why am I pissed all the time? Why didn't I get what they had? I'm just confused. And I said, well, drinking and drugging makes me feel a whole lot better. The 60s came. I was 22 in 1966. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. Wow, yes. I hit that running. I said, this is me. I was free for a while. Happy. I thought it was feeling really good. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Who can argue with that? And I soon became addicted to heroin, and my life was... Ended up doing a couple of years in prison. Got out. Returned to drinking and drugging, but not going to go back to jail. Not going to do that again. I didn't. And then I met a woman and got married and I promised her I would not do any hard drugs for as long as we were together and I didn't but she was from a big Irish family and they drank and I drank and they drank and drank and drank and the marriage was not a good one it wasn't made in heaven but for three years it was beautiful then the first child came and it went to heaven Neither one of us was equipped to make the necessary adjustments or compromises to, ad to accommodate the other one. And we started arguing, and it was just not good. It was shit after a while. And uh, finally, by the 90s, I was, what, in my 40s then, we got a divorce. And I was now free to drink and drug the way I wanted. I still hadn't learned any other way. I was always intelligent, truth-speaking, not a bad person, helpful, but angry and frustrated, maybe arrogant at times, maybe hurtful, egocentric, but in general, not a bad person. Drinking and drugging like a mother, though. And that continued on for years. And finally, let's fast forward when I turned 62. I said, what's next? 70? Are you going to be the world's oldest living alcoholic junkie who tries to live with honor? And I said, 
interesting. Maybe I'll be in the tabloids. And I, no, not a good idea. In that moment, I said, you have to stop moderating. You cannot stop now. It's all you know. But you can drink this much less this week next week and next week and after nine months I was sober and clean and feeling great. First time in my life feeling really good. Three months passed of clean and sober and it wasn't great but it was better than it had ever been. At six months I started to experience something that happiness. Not elation or joy or excitement, just feeling not only not bad, but really good. In nine months, I said, you're happy. This is what you have always seen in others and always wanted. You are happy. This is what it feels like. Nine months. In a year, I knew it wasn't going anywhere. This was going to be my state, as long as I kept doing what I was doing. Mainly, not drinking heavily, not drugging. Fifteen months, my friend said, I'm going to Mexico for ten days on vacation. Want to come? I said, I've never been. We went to Mexico. First day I woke up in Mexico, I had been feeling in a bliss of sort almost non-stop for about a year. When I woke up in Mexico, I felt something different. It was good. It was better in a way. What I found out later was that put that many million people in one place with common, strong traits of peace, respect, love, politeness, compassion, sharing, loving. That many million. It's in the air. You can feel it. I didn't know it, but I was feeling that. It was just better. Then it got better day by day. In the seventh day, I was walking around the big square in the center of Oaxaca City, filled with Saturday night shoppers and families and soft music. And I realized for the first time in my life, I need nothing. I need my life. I'm free. And I got goosebumps top to bottom. Sweet tears filled my eyes. And I sat to enjoy the moment on the low wall which ran around the perimeter of this big square. And to my left, I noticed a homeless man lying on the pavement. See you guys. Bye bye. And I said to myself, What can I do for him? I can buy a covering and cover him. Okay. I went and bought a covering. First time in my life I wanted a pure act of giving. I don't know why, but I did. I wanted to cover him without stopping. No, hello, I'm helping you. You okay? I'm, I'm Jimmy. And I wanted to continue walking through the crowd. No eye contact. No, I did. No. I don't know why, but I did. So I bought the sheet, put it across my shoulder, covered him as I walked by. Pretty well out of the corner of my eye. I didn't even look directly. I covered him well, continued walking, no eye contact with anyone in the crowd, holding an image of him in my mind, and suddenly I do not know from where or how, but with crystal clarity in the depths of my soul, I knew he and I are one. Everyone is one. The universe is one and full with this beautiful realization I begin to sob walking through the crowd tears and heaving and beautiful it was it was wonderful and on the ninth day my friend said are you ready to go home tomorrow and I said I'm staying here and he said, but you don't know, and, you, and I said, it's going to be fine, I'm going to be fine. Now, up until that moment, I was very comfortable with no God, no afterlife, no nothing. When I die, darkness and the worms will have me, and thanks for the ride, but God and after, no. Comfortable. 
After that, I started thinking, if everything's connected and we're all one, and well, where's it all come from? It's got to come from somewhere. Okay, and I have all these theories. If you'd like to hear my theory on creation and the five great unanswerable questions of, is there a God? How did I get here? Why am I here? Who am I? What happens when I die? I'd be happy to go into it. If you want me to tell you a little bit more what happened to me the next after that in Mexico, I'll go into that. Uh, yeah, let's continue to Mexico and then okay. go into those. <laughs> My friend went home and I thanked him for taking me. And next day on the roof of the hostel, I struck up a conversation with a young man who I didn't even like his looks, but I said, say hello. And I did. It was the best move I ever made because he said, have you heard of a little town on the southern Pacific coast? Uh, it's a beach. And I, my ears perked up immediately. Beach. I love the beach. Always have. Always wanted to live on it anyway. And he said, yeah, Zippolita. Palm trees, hammocks on the beach, weed, clothing optional, no big hotels, very few people. I said, sounds good to me, I'll check it out for two days. And I went and it's been my home for seven years now. It is a paradise on earth. Well, I found it out of the box, first chance. Boom, thank you. But I, I mean, I am, and I know I am, one of the luckiest people on the planet. I know that. That's okay. Why? Not important. I am, and I love it. I try to share it. That's all I can do. Enjoy it and try to share it. Mm. Palm trees, a beautiful beach, powerful waves. Weed, clothing optional, women, friendly. I wasn't there too long before a beautiful young French law student said to me the seven most beautiful words I had heard in my life to that moment. Jimmy, would you sleep with me tonight? Twenty-two, long, beautiful. And I said to myself, is there a reason to say no? No, I mean, sure, I'll sleep with you. A few months later, a lovely young Mexican woman came to me on the beach nothing on top threw her arms around me and said when Jimmy when and I said when what and she said when you and me I had been without a woman for many years and I said in this moment and she said I have to work I said tonight where do you live right there and she came that night and for a few nights after, and it was good. It's a magical place, Sepulite. Things happen there that wouldn't happen to me or others anywhere else in the world. I'm not guaranteeing if you visit, you're gonna get, that's going to happen to you. It hasn't happened to me in years now, but it happened. I've also seen things there that there is no explanation for. Others also have seen things. Thing. Hello, welcome. But there's no explanation. To me, it's the existence of three separate energies in this one tiny beach. First, the energy of the waves, undeniable. The people energy, gentle, peaceful. And the ancient Sapotec Indians, the relatives of the Aztecs and the Mayans and those people, ancient Sapotec committed ritual sacrifice on this beach. So I believe the spiritual energy there in this one spot is the only explanation I can think of why I have seen and felt and others have seen and felt the things they seen and felt. But why is not important. It's there. The true magic of the universe is there in Sipolita. And it's been my home for seven years now. Well, what brings you here? Well, every year the... Rainy season starts and there aren't many people coming through town and hot, humid, rainy. 
and the only people around are the Mexicans, and they know me, and, and I got nothing new to say to them. And I say, well, time to journey, and they do every year. Usually Thailand, this year here, and, and it's my life now to share what I know of life with anyone. So I find many people to speak to. Sometimes not for a long time, but that's okay. Weeks will pass, well, a week will pass without anyone being interested. That's okay. I have a nice, easy job. It's to share the way that I think, feel, live, and act with anyone who will listen. And if no one wants, that's okay. I'm happy, peaceful, clear. So that's why I'm here. What is the purpose of life? <laughs> is there... Okay. Want to hear mine? Yes. Okay. First, is there a God? I don't know. I believe in a creator only. Okay, there are two billion planets in our Milky Way, right? Our galaxy, you know, two billion planets. Mm -hmm. And the scientists say they know of at least two billion other galaxies. Anything that could, and I choose to believe it came from somewhere or it didn't, I say, okay, it came from somewhere. Where? A creator, something or something so powerful that it could create all of this. How can I know anything of the mind or the intentions of anything so powerful? I can't. But I said to myself, why would anything so perfect, so powerful, want or need to create anything? Why? It's perfect. It's, I said, maybe it's not perfect in the way I understand perfect. Maybe it's not in balance, and it knows in some way it's just not in balance. And in an effort to create more balance, more peace, I said, maybe more peace, I don't know. It created everything in a hope maybe that we would find peace, share peace with each other, and thereby share with each other, share with it. Restoring it to balance. I don't know. There could be other life. I have no idea. But that's what I came up with. I can't prove it. I don't know it. And I don't truly believe it in the depths of my soul yet that I'm close. That's why I'm... That's, that's God. He created everything in an attempt to achieve balance. The universe. That's all. Everything. I can't know anything in the mind intentions of anything that could create. So I said, maybe it's not in balance, maybe it won't have blah, 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 and I'm doing the Creator's work. Okay. That's why. Simple. Anything more is beyond me and beyond anyone, I believe, to know how and why and all this other stuff. I don't know. That's what I choose to believe. Created me to increase its own balance. Everything. Okay? How did I get here? Why? How no first how did I get here? I believe that everything is energy. This, you, me, the air, the planets, the air, everything is energy in different forms. I don't know it, I can't prove it, but I believe it. Now, some of the energy in my father's sperm met the energy in my mother's magical egg and became me. That's how I got here. Anything more is too complicated for me, and I choose to keep things simple. Energy. And here I am. Why am I here? I believe that I am here. Why am I alive right away? I am here to be at peace, to be happy. I don't believe that I was born to struggle, to worry. I'm here to be at peace. That's my job, to be at peace, to share peace with others. That's why I'm here. I believe everyone has their own destiny that they choose. No one has a grand, preordained mission in life. We all find their own way. We all choose it or don't. But it's for us to decide, and I've decided peace, happiness, and share it. Makes sense to me. That's why I'm here. I've decided that's why I'm here. Anything which gets in the way is to be ignored, eliminated, diminished. Anything which increases my peace, happiness, 
inability to share these things with others is to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Why am I here to be happy and free and peaceful and to share with others these beautiful things that I enjoy? Simple. God, how did I get here? Why am I here? Who am I? Who am I? All my life I said, okay, you're called Jimmy. You have been a father, a worker, a son, a convict, a criminal, a helper, a worker, a, but these are all things you do. Who you are? Who are you? Who? Okay, I'm a human being, but that's a name. That's a name. It's a category. You're a human being. Okay. A human being with a mind, a body, and consciousness. Yes, but. Again, those are things. That, who are you? And once in an effort, about four years ago, to finally get the answer, who am I? You know DMT? Yeah. You've done it? No. Okay. It's the God drug. The, yeah. Okay. Spirit molecule? Yeah, that's what they call it. Yeah. I got some DMT and a mirror and I smoked the DMT and looked into the mirror, alert, but not looking for, alert for any of the normal fear or love or any, just ready to see what I could see, that's all. And I looked. I looked. And I saw one thing only looking back at me. I want. I want. I want. I only want them. I'm selfish. I, I only want I And I started to think. I said, okay, you want. What do you want? You want world peace? Yes. You want revenge on your enemies? Yes. You want an end to world hunger? You want true love? You want every woman to fuck you? You want a new car? You want... Okay, you want, yes, that's all you just want, everything, always. And then became my job to be aware that there are healthy wants and unhealthy wants, simple. I knew in that moment I was ego, pure ego. Everyone, I believe, is ego. That's who we are. Mm. We want, always, everything. But my job is to decide healthy wants and unhealthy wants. Healthy wants for me are peace, clarity, sharing, loving, creating, helping, healing, soothing. Those are healthy wants, mm. unhealthy wants. Resentment, what you have that I should have. Uh, revenge on you for hurting me. Uh, control over others. Those are not healthy wants for me. Okay, what do I do? The healthy wants I can think about and either indulge or not indulge if they are a good fit. The unhealthy ones are to be ignored. Recognized, accepted, they're there, but to ignore them. To try to do what I could to diminish them until they disappear, maybe. So that's who I am. I am ego, pure ego. I always want I want excitement, I want peace, I want love, I want revenge, I want, I want, I want, but healthy or unhealthy. So I choose to live my life. Healthy thoughts and emotions and wants are to be considered, accepted, okay, I want, and that's okay, but should I? All right, maybe, maybe not. Unhealthy? No. Not to be indulged to be ignored, given nothing, starved, perhaps, until they abate, diminish, and maybe someday are gone. Probably not until I'm dead and free, but I don't know. Healthy wants and unhealthy wants. Simple. Not easy to live, but simple to understand. That's who I am. I am ego. Pleased to meet you, fellow ego. What happens when I die? <laughs> I believe that I came from free energy and I'm now in this form. 
when I die, whatever it is that makes me me, cheer me, joins, rejoins the great energy from whence it came in such a way that I'm everything, everyone, everywhere, all the time, free again from where I came, maybe in a baby's smile or a drop of rain from a flower in the belly of a cockroach, the Jimmy is no more free again. Well, that's my answers to the five great unknowables. Is there a God? How did I get here? Why am I here? Who am I? And what happens when I die? It's all simple for me. I don't know any of those things, but I choose to believe them. Those are my beliefs now. And no one's going to change me. Unless they give me something more reasonable, more sensible, I'll say, okay, that's... But I haven't heard anything so simple and easy to believe and easy for me to accept. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, psychedelics like DMT, ayahuasca, have you tried these? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh... I don't know, maybe you could talk about them, what are they, and it's important to try. Or... Mushrooms are my favorite. Have you tried any of them? Yeah, I've tried the uh, mushrooms and LSD. And what? LSD is uh -huh. one. Yeah. For me, they're all pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. They allow me to see so clearly. There's nothing worth worrying about that I am beautiful, that everyone is beautiful, that I am a part of everything. I'm the tiniest part, and, and my job is to be in harmony, not to be the center, and to enjoy this life, to be loving, beautiful, sharing, compassion, to enjoy every moment if I can. Nothing's worth worrying about. Anything which helps me along that path for me is good. Ooh. But now I don't need them really anymore. Mm -hmm. I see clearly. I have my job to be at peace, happy, and to share. Mm -hmm. I know that I am next to nothing. I don't Sorry. Uh, mushrooms a bit north. Uh, there is a little farm there. They're not too powerful, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty good trip. Here in Bali? Yeah, just nice. not far from Ubud. Because it's been raining a lot, so we figured there must be cow fields somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We drove around a couple of weeks ago with some friends. I met, uh, actually, I met them here at the Rainbow Gathering. Maybe you know about it. They Have probably started, yeah? Yeah, not here, but yeah. Yeah, they had the World Gathering. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do different gatherings now. For a healing gathering, raw gathering. Uh, so there's a uh, World Gathering, yeah. And uh, they decided last year was, I think, Ethiopia, and this year was Indonesia. I heard about it when I was in Nepal, so I thought I would come here, and it was in East Java. And it was really magical place as well. It was a kind of beach with uh, banana plantations, pretty close to the village, but the villagers were really nice. Nice. So that was the first one I ever went to, and uh, yeah, I met a lot of interesting people there. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them are still here, some of them are, you know, dispersed now in Malaysia or other places, and some of them are going to the European gathering, which is this year in Italy. <laughs> Italy? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, they have many European gatherings and kind of different, different kinds in various places. Yeah. So you've been one in Vermont? Yeah. <laughs> it was all right. Actually, it sucked. Yeah. I must have picked the wrong camp or something. Mm. First, it was raining. I had no shoes. And uh, the foul mouths of the young people I could hear from 50, 75 yards away. Mm. Not up. You fucking mother, you fucking and I and the elders speaking of the Bible and the fucking this and motherfucking that. That's bizarre. I said not not really for me. Yeah. It's not what Rainbow is about and I must have picked the wrong one, but I am not gonna stay here another day. I stayed for one night and left. Mm. Okay.
But I'm not close to it, and I'd love to try another. That's yeah, I think they're all open to anyone. The idea is there. It's, it depends on what kind of people and energies. Like, I think this one was uh, was definitely one a really interesting one. It was the first and only one so far that I've been mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I was in India, and I heard of one happening there, and then later I met people that were there, and they told me about this one, and so I thought, well, Indonesia sounds great, so... Yeah. So, yeah, that's a uh, it's very interesting idea. I think the idea is definitely right, you know, living as a community and uh, sharing and having this kind of no money, no uh, real goal, like you want to do stuff, you do, you do it, you, you don't, you don't, and everyone kind of finds a way to make it work and some things get done and actually sometimes works great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Freedom. There for about two weeks only. Yeah. It's not still going on. Uh, no, but the place now, that location, they want to make it a permaculture farm. Mm-hmm. The locals were really great, even though that it's very Muslim and they were very kind of opposed to the nudity, you know, that... Um, but uh, well, now it's over, and then there was a cleanup, and anything you want to share of your way? Mm. Yeah, I think I agree with uh, with a lot of what you're saying. Maybe, maybe even everything. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Almost everything. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think I live in a similar way. I'm also still thinking about passions and what I, I'm sharing a lot as well. It, my way is, for example, the raw diet. I try to stick to only fruits. Mm. It's something that I learned about maybe a year and a half ago. And, um, yeah, I find that it's really grounding as well. connects more with the earth. It's more natural. Like, this is how our ancestors and how other animals, they, they don't cook food. They just eat uh, what's natural, what grows, just fruits and vegetables. And Let me ask you this for me. <laughs> How do you decide? What, what is your daily intake of uh, fruits and vegetables? The amount, you mean? Or no, I mean, what kinds? Oh, I'm what kind? Just I whatever. I want to change yeah. my diet. I'd love to get yeah. on a simpler, more natural diet, but I... Oh, so actually, let me tell you about something I do in the morning. Maybe you see, I, live, I leave, I try to leave before 8, because the morning market, you have to go all the way to the end, and they throw away so many fruits, and uh, so I pick up a lot of the fruits and then there's very generous locals as well that see me do it and they even give me things sometimes yeah usually it's stuff that maybe they cannot sell the next day or whatever but I get really ripe and delicious uh, mangoes and bananas and papayas and dragon fruit I mean yeah you, you have, have to balance in your diet. I think so I think uh, this is all that I really need um, it comes from intuition like that's really what our ancestors uh, need and I think it takes some time for the more I watch different YouTube channels about raw vegans and fruitarians they're talking about well uh, your cells in your body may be made up from the cooked food they used to eat so it might take some years until you transition and it took some weeks and maybe some time to really stop the cravings to cooked food and to other foods that you might be used to eating um, but uh, yeah, the more you adjust to it, the lighter you feel, more energy, better skin, better hair, better. I think even clarity in your mind is less foggy. You know, more natural diet. Is, I'm sure. Yeah. Let me ask you this for me. Uh, what? You don't you don't cook food at all now? I, uh, no, I don't cook. You don't eat cooked food? Um, or do you? Rarely, I might if there's something. Okay. In, I'm yeah. not interested in you and in, in, in just a plant, but I'm, I'm mm-hmm. interested in how you're living. For my own uh, reference, mm-hmm. and so you eat three, four times a day, just whenever you feel like it. Or? More when I feel like it. I've been watching also different YouTubers uh, talk about it. Yeah. What kind of vegetables do you? Eat? Lately, I haven't really had much, but uh, I see uh, what's recommended by these guys. They're uh, leafy greens that'll have like more minerals. Yes, leafy greens. I don't get enough of those. Yeah. And carrots. Maybe spinach or... Orangey things. Orange things. Oh, you know, there's orange... Oh, you mean... <laughs> orange things. They, the carrots and, and uh, there must be other 
I've, uh, I've heard uh, that. Orange colored. Uh, exactly. Well, those actually used to be purple. There's uh, it, it, there's like the sweet potatoes around here. If you've yeah. seen them, they're all purple. Sure, I have all of them. <laughs> I'm only interested in the raw things. Like, if you'd like, of course. How much do you spend on food a day? Well, it, it really depends where I am. But, About. Um, it, I mean, if it's in Asia, it's normally under 10 bucks, like it might be 5 to 6, 7, it really depends. A week or a day? Per day, yeah. But $10 lately... a day on vegetables? No, no, on fruits. Um, when my primary diet is fruits. I would say I really love things like bananas and oranges and mangoes and papayas, just whatever is in season, local and ripe and tasty. So this is what I crave. I'm, uh, ever since I was a child, I always loved sweet things. And uh, you know, if there's cake, I would wake up Me and want to eat the cake in the morning. Me but too. after I realized this is our nature. Our nature is to eat fruits, sweet, juicy fruits. And in the last year that I was uh, basically identified, I guess, as a fruitarian. But really, we're frugivores. If we look at other animals, like it's most similar to us, apes and monkeys, they they are frugivores, their primary diet consists of fruits. And uh, and we can kind of draw from this example and look at our physiology. You know, our hands are not like claws, we couldn't kill an animal. Our stomachs, they couldn't really digest raw meat. Our teeth, we couldn't really bite into raw meat. So what we adapted to eating the these cooked foods because of convenience, I think. Convenience, but maybe also necessity for survival like maybe in the past uh, ice age we couldn't get our hands on fresh raw foods and so we had to uh, to learn to cook meat and stuff and then we wanted to settle and have these grains and wh whatever this past history and also tradition and uh, that led to this diet that most people eat today but um, when I discovered this, it made all this logical, but also intuitive sense, and also from scientific research, the more I see, the less kind of animal product, the less grain, the less cooked is uh, kind of the, the healthiest diet. Um, but yeah, in terms of budget, so lately I've uh, actually spent nothing on food because I only go to this market in the morning and collect everything they throw away and I mean I pick up like maybe 10 kilos worth of fruits so yeah some of it is bad so I throw it away but a lot of it is edible it may be at least more than half of it so I eat I would say on average about five kilograms of food fruits. A day? and you have to keep in mind fruit which is mostly juicy more it has maybe 80% of it is water and I actually don't drink any water at all because okay. I get all my fluid and hydration from the fruit so 10 kilos a day no five I would say okay maybe about five mm. that's that's the average and kind of the general idea but uh, when your body starts to clean and digestion I also can eat less in general I, I can kind of um, just survive on less food, I think. And also, the being uh, like fasting is uh, also very healthy for your body uh, to clean. There, I recently went to a talk, and uh, she said something that I thought was probably quite true. Your body is in two states: it's either digesting or it's healing. So I think that makes sense to me. So mm. <laughs> I've gone. 32 days with very little solid food, seven days twice with nothing, five days and three, a couple of ones. I never adopted it as a part of my, whenever I, I wake up one day and I say, today may be even a fast today. Oh, is this natural? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'd wake up and I'd say, maybe today, and then mm. one day, two days, five days, seven days, and one time, 32, with very little solid food. Mostly liquid or water? Oh. I would have a bowl of clear uh, vegetable broth every day, and mm. a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. It was an effort to raise money uh. for the poor and hungry in the town, Sipolita. 
32 days. I lost only about 15 pounds off an already spare frame. I was like 148 when I started. Mm. I went down to like 132. I was mm. in them bones. Raised about, you know, eight hundred dollars in oh. friends all over the world. Nice. I got a photo of me, I'll show it to you. So I'm sitting with a stack of rice and beans and mm -hmm. yeah. skin and bones. I mean you could see the bones. Wow. But I'm just smiling and happy, feeling good. Oh. I haven't fasted since oh, a couple of years now. But you mentioned it. But you have helped me now, I believe, that maybe I'm going to start transitioning from these yeah. omelet and rice to... Try to include more fresh fr uh, food, any any fresh vegetables, yeah. fruits. The yeah. problem for me is it just hasn't been a good fit. It hasn't been a convenient thing. Yeah. It's not easy. Like, around here, I, I haven't found much... Orange? Sure. No, I'm saying, oh. is it an orange? Yes, it is. I don't want to have to go to the trouble of peeling it. That's for me. It's, oh. it's, it's a, it's a bother. Well, peel. you peel this, didn't you? That's the same. Nah. You peel it and then you throw it away. Just it's, yeah, you know. You know what else is interesting? It's my ego. This this doesn't decompose in I don't know a thousand or right. however mm -hmm. many years, but this in a few days it's already part of nature and mm -hmm. it goes back to growing another Absolutely. plant. It's a nice side effect as well when I eat, let's say, a papaya, you know, all these seeds that I'm dropping, they all have potential for more life. So instead of destroying something, I'm giving more life potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's part of the all. It became, I, I think I became much more spiritual, much more connected, much, uh, yeah, it became a very interesting uh, transition. It hasn't always been an easy journey, but... If you look for the fruit and you focus on it, you know the law of attraction. Have you heard of this? Mm -hmm. So I, I believe in this. When, since I first discovered it, it made good sense to me, and I started to practice this. And I think, uh, yeah, this just as anything in life, if you focus on it and you think about it and you bring about this uh, more of what you want. So since I started to focus on the fruit and talk about the fruit everywhere I've traveled. It, that's been what maybe my message part of it is like we need to go back to the basics and we need to just consume only fruits and yeah. it becomes and especially when it's local and in season then it's the best it's usually the cheapest a lot of times it might even be free and uh, yeah we've just produced no damage to the environment no around carbon us. footprint exactly I mean, there still might be some if we're trucking things back and forth, but it's just minimal. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah I'm not me. worried. About it. No, I understand. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all right. But uh, at the end of the day, that just seems... And it's also the healthiest diet. Like, our digestive system is meant to really eat only fruits. Like, this is the best in its raw, natural state. We can eat it and... Uh, and we don't need to cook it, we don't need to process it in any way, we just peel it as it comes from nature and eat it like with no human or other, you know, intervention from anybody. Yeah. It makes sense to me. Yeah. And so. The big, the biggest, um, well, there are two main attractions to me in this moment. Nutrition, being a part of the environment, all that, other, and cheaper. Yeah. I will not have, I'm currently spending probably eight dollars a day on food at restaurants. Yeah. And I don't, I would not spend that much on fruits and vegetables. Not eight dollars a day. Well, if, uh, it depends. If you, if you go to the market, the right markets, and you load up on stuff, you might spend less or you might even spend nothing as I'm doing now. But this is unique. I only learned about recycling and I think this came a little bit more because of this rainbow gathering. I started to meet the right people that are just like between zero to, you know, very low budget travelers. And they showed me like, yeah, you go to this market in the morning, they throw away all this fruit. Like, Pick it up. Yeah. Just Pick all it. it takes is come there and start picking it up and then you'll notice there is more and then people will start giving you. Yeah. Every day I've been going there and I've and, uh, been taking 
all the fruit, the stuff that I have to eat right now, I eat it for breakfast, and then I save whatever can be saved for the next uh, couple hours or the evening, and and yeah. then I just go again the next morning. <laughs> nice, yeah. So, yeah, come with me if you'd like tomorrow morning, it's, unless you're leaving early. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to leave over noon time. And that reminds me. I should go downstairs and book my okay. van with my friend. Hello. Okay. You're on Facebook? Yes. Yeah, let's just swap. And uh, I like the idea that you did a photo uh, yesterday.